Moving on to the next example, given f of x is equal to negative 2x squared, find the exact instantaneous rate of change at an x value of 2, and then find the exact instantaneous rate of change when x is equal to a. So, since they want the exact one, we know that we're going to have to use the difference quotient and algebraically manipulate it. So, since they want it at a specific point of 2, we know that our a value is 2, so we could plug in f of 2 plus h minus f of 2 all over h. So, plugging in 2 plus h for the x value in the function, we would have negative 2 and then 2 plus h squared minus f of 2, if we plug in 2 for the x value, we'd have 2 squared, which is 4, times negative 2 is negative 8. And this is all over h. So if we take the 2 plus h and FOIL it, 2 plus h times 2 plus h, we'd get 4 plus 4h plus h squared. And then minus negative 8 becomes positive 8, and this is all over h. Continuing this up here, let's distribute the negative 2 in the brackets. So negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. Negative 2 times 4h is negative 8h. And then negative 2 times h squared is negative 2h squared uh, plus 8. And this is all over h. The negative 8 and the positive 8, they net out to 0. And then notice how we can factor out a h from the numerator. So we get negative 8 minus 2h all over h. The h's cancel out. We're left with negative 8 minus 2h. And to find the exact instantaneous rate of change, what does that mean? The h has to be very small. We have to pick a very small h value. So the smallest it could be is something very, very close to 0. So it would approach 0 and we would just be left with negative 8 as the exact instantaneous rate of change at an x value of 2. So again, difference quotient, algebraically manipulated to get rid of the h in the denominator, and then after you do that, sub in 0 for h, and you're left with the exact instantaneous rate of change. Now, in part b, this is a unique question that we haven't done yet because in the video before and in this example, they asked for the exact instantaneous rate of change at a specific point, x is equal to 2. Well, now they want an expression for the instantaneous rate of change at a general point, x is equal to a. So we would do the exact same thing. Let's rewrite the difference quotient, f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. But now, instead of plugging in something for a, we just keep the a as it is. So f of a plus h, if we plug that into our function, we'd have negative 2 a plus h squared minus f of a, we would just plug in a for the x. So we'd have negative 2 a squared all over h. Now, same thing here we would uh, FOIL the a plus h squared, so a plus h times a plus h. If we take that and simplify it, we'd end up having a squared plus 2ah plus h squared, negative or minus negative 2a squared, that becomes positive 2a squared, and this is all over h. Now let's distribute that negative 2 inside the bracket, so we'd get negative 2a squared uh, minus 4ah minus 2h squared plus 2a squared. This is all over h. Notice how the negative 2a squared and the 2a squared cancel out. And then notice how we can factor out an h in the numerator. So let's continue this up here as I'm running a bit out of room. So h, we factor out of the numerator and we're left with negative 4a minus 2h all over h. The h's cancel out and we're left with negative 4a minus 2h. And remember at this point to get the exact instantaneous rate of change we want to figure out what happens when h is approaching 0. So we plug in 0 for h and we're just left with negative 
A. So this here is our general expression for the instantaneous rate of change of this function at any point x is equal to a. And that can be very helpful because now let's say you're get, you can be given a number of these questions. So let's go back to the question we did in part a. Find the exact instantaneous rate of change at x is equal to 2. Well we can just take that a value of 2, plug it into our general expression, and we get negative 8, which is what we ended up getting anyways when we algebraically did it. But let's say they want more values. Let's say they ask, what's well, the instantaneous rate of change at an x value of 3? Well, we could just plug in 3 for the a and we would get negative 12. What about at negative 3? Plugging in negative 3, we would get positive 12. So it's, uh, it's sometimes pretty useful to sometimes get a general expression for the instantaneous rate of change especially if you're given questions where they're asking you multiple times what's the exact instantaneous rate of change at x is equal to a bunch of different numbers. Instead of doing the algebra for each of those numbers, you can just do the algebra once for a general value a, and then you could just simply plug in that a value depending on what x values they're asking you for. So, Depends what your teacher wants. Some teachers really like this general form, so they'll make you solve the general form and then they'll have you plug in specific x values. Some teachers just want you to specifically find it just for that x value. So depending on, uh, depending on your school, depending on your teacher, but uh, I thought I would put both examples just in case.